What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you a little Python library that allows you to use Instagram filters and other filters and to also edit images in Python instead of using social media apps like Snapchat or Instagram to do that. And you might be asking, what's the use case for that? Why do I need to do that in Python? Why can I not do that on Instagram or on Snapchat? Uh, the reason is the scalability. Now, if you have a script to do that, you can do that on 100 images, on 1,000 images, on 10,000 images, and you can apply the same effects or different effects depending on certain things um, onto a lot of images. If you do all of this in Instagram, you need to open each image and you need to apply a filter or you need to use other apps. In Python, everything works uh, easier if you already know how to program, which I think you do. Uh, so the library that we're going to use today is called Pilgrim and we're going to install it by opening up the command line of our choice and typing pip install Pilgrim. Uh, this library is based on pillow, so you need to also install pillow. And then we're going to say import pill.image and import pilgram like that. So for the examples for this tutorial, I have prepared two images that are copyright free from Pixabay. Uh, this guy here and this guy here, this is uh, those two pictures are what we're going to use to apply uh, the filters and to also change some settings. And what we want to do first is want to say image equals pill dot image dot open um, and want to apply this on person dot JPEG. So we want to open on person, uh, we want to open the person JPEG image. And now we're going to apply a filter. So we're going to say pilgrim dot and then we have all these filters here. So some of them are known from Instagram, for example, Lark or um, rise or for example, where is it inkwell was also available or low fee and all that. I'm not sure if all of those are Instagram filters actually. So for example, uh, actually, they seem to be I don't know if Stinson, for example, I'm not sure if that is an, uh, an Instagram filter. Um, but anyway, we're going to call low fee, for example, onto the image, and then we're going to say safe and we can say filtered dot JPEG, for example. And just running this is enough to get a filtered image. So um, where is it? There you go. This is now the image with the filter. This is the image without the filter. So this is like the most basic thing that you can do with this library. You have 100 images, you want to apply the same filter on all of them. Um, and you don't want to do that one by one. So what you do is you just iterate through a directory of pictures, and then you apply the filter onto all the pictures. So this is one thing that you can do with that. Of course, you can do that with a couple of filters. So inkwell, for example, uh, or um, Kelvin, for example, and then we're going to save them in different JPEG files. And this is also a use case, maybe you want to try out a couple of filters. And what you do is you apply all of the filters onto 100 images, and then you compare them uh, to see which ones you like the most, for example, this could be one use case. Um, here we have now filter two, filter three. Uh, one thing I'm not sure about if we can do that is passing a second parameter here for the intensity. But we can try that. No, it doesn't seem to work, right? No, unexpected argument, because we can do that with other functions in that library, but we cannot do that with the filters themselves. So this is the most basic thing you can do, you can just apply a filter. This is, again, the most basic thing. Uh, you can also use CSS uh, filters, so more uh, custom filters. So let's say we want to increase the saturation, for example, we can just say pilgrim dot CSS dot um, what was it dot saturate, and we can saturate the image with twice the amount of saturation. So what is that cannot find? Let's see if it finds it when I run this. Okay, so it did find it, but we didn't save it. Uh, filtered for dot JPEG. And now we should see the image here on the left. Come on, there you go. So it has a higher level of saturation than the uh, original image. So twice the amount of saturation. Uh, we can also I think go with 0 0.5 meaning halving the saturation and 
We can also go for zero to, uh, to zero to make it black and white, essentially. Uh, but you can see the effect here. So this is one thing we can do. We can also do a uh, hue rotation. So uh, basically a color rotation. And this is done by saying pilgram.css.hue underscore rotate uh, image. And then we can rotate, I don't know, 20 and save filtered 5.jpg. And we can copy and do the same thing with negative 200, for example. And then we get two images out of that. And we can do a, a couple of things. We can do sepia or sepia. We can do contrast. We can do grayscale. Um, I'm not going to show all the filters. You can read the documentation for that. But essentially, the CSS stuff is used to just apply certain effects, uh, like increasing the saturation, increasing the contrast, and so on. Um, and this is what we get here from rotating the colors. So this can also be an interesting thing to play around with. Um, and last but not least, what I want to show you here is the blending options. So blending two images, remember, we have two images here. And if we want to blend them, we have different things we can do. First of all, we're going to say image two is pill image, open person two dot JPEG. <clears throat> and then we're going to say, Pilgram dot CSS dot blending. And now we can blend, for example, the color, we can say blend color, image one, or just image and image two, and then save as blended dot PNG, or actually JPEG. And we can look at the result then. Uh, where is it? There you go. For some reason, my pie charm is quite slow. But there you go, you can see we're blending the colors now. So um, yeah, this is what happens when you blend the colors when you mix them. Um, there are other filters as well. So we don't have just color, we also have darken and light, uh, lighten, which basically, as far as I understand, this is when you call this one, you get the darker pixel. So you, you compare them pixel by pixel, and then you take the darker pixels. So so if they have two pixels at the same position, and one is darker than the other one, this is what you take into the final image. And here it's the opposite, you always pick the brighter pixels. Um, and what we also have is difference and multiply. So difference is I think self explanatory and multiply, I don't really know what multiply does. But we can check this out. So I'm just going to save those into images. But again, the use case is so to keep in mind why this is useful is you have a lot of images and you want to apply the same operation onto all of these images. And you want to do that in an automated way. So this here is the blending by color. This here is the darken. This is the light uh, lighten. This is the what was it? This was the difference. And here we have the multiply. I don't know what multiplies to be honest. Uh, but yeah, the difference is, I think, self explanatory, you take one picture and subtract the other picture from that one. Um, but this is what I want to show you here, this simple library to apply filters and effects onto images in an automated way using Python. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.